to record this. Okay. Any more questions about this one? We're basically looking for groups of three. So if you break it down to the prime factorization and you pull out your twos and threes separately, or if you have like what, a group of three sixes, it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? There's a sort of a, what do I want to say? There's a correlation between those things, I guess, right? There's a pattern there. Oh, I was going to move this stuff and see the next problem. That's what's happening. Shifting things around on my computer. All right. I don't even see what I'm doing there. Cube root. Oh, now they're throwing a minus eight at us. Who's next? Kathleen? Did you get this one? Um, I am almost done. I just got to the very ending. Okay, so how would you break apart in minus eight? So I just did two times four and then two times two times negative one. So two times two times two times negative one. Okay, and then there's a negative one for the for the negative eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. That might work. Um And so did you say you brought this out or am I just- Yeah, I pulled, the, I pulled one, two out and then just times negative one. So I'm what about two root of minus one? Can we pull that thing out? No. Is, are there three things that can multiply to minus one is what we want to think. Yeah. yeah. What three things would multiply to minus one? Minus one. Minus one, right? Thanks and so you said positive two or you pulled out positive twos. When I was thinking about this problem, I would probably just tack that negative onto like these two. It's a negative two. Okay. Yeah, you could you could pull out negative two here or you could do it like this, right? Over here. But all in all, when we get done with this thing, we should end up pulling out a negative from this thing. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday, I think. But when we get to cube roots, we can we can do that, right? Let's look backwards three seconds to yesterday or whenever it was. Let me give you an even root. Squ square root of a minus four. Can we do that? Yeah, it's just two times two. We can pull out a two, but what about the negative here is what I was trying to get at. Like one negative, one positive. If you make one negative and one positive, right? Two are these two of the same thing yeah. mm, one's negative one's positive so when we have like an even root like a two right mm -hmm. and maybe i can pull out the two for the four if you want to whatever i'm just thinking about the negative signs there if can i get two things that are the same thing that will multiply and be a negative if it's the same thing they're either two negatives or two positives right Mm -hmm. So either it'd be like a minus one, minus one, that's going to multiply to positive. Positive one and positive one multiplies to positive. So there's no two things I can multiply that would be negative one. But when I throw three things in there, right? Are there three things that can multiply that would be minus one? Whew, I don't know why I threw a three in there. Sorry. <laughs> I said three and I was writing one and then something short wired in my brain, I think. Are there three things I can multiply that would be a minus one? We can pull out negatives from cube roots is what I'm trying to get at here, right? When we talk about three things, we can do three negatives. That will give us a negative. When we do two things, we can't talk about pulling out the negative quite yet. Mm -hmm. So just we, two, we, we talked about i yesterday. That that's that's incorrect, right? We can pull it out as an i. Square root of one negative is an i. We did get to, to, to imaginaries. So 
forgot they threw that in there because it's coming back up. So maybe like a juxtaposition might help you out here. So let's like write that other thing out again. We do root a uh, cube root of a minus eight, right? Versus that. So if we do square roots of negatives, we're gonna end up with imaginaries. But when we talk about these things, right? We can actually pull the negative out and not have to worry about like imaginary things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if we've talked about it directly, but this it really has to do with the number, right? What they call the parity or the even or oddness of a number. If it's even and we're talking about two numbers, there's no ways we're going to get that negative out without having imaginary numbers. But if we have an odd number, an odd number of negatives multiplies to a negative. Teacher, please, you started to confuse me. When we have minus one root square, minus one root square. It's an imaginary number i, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a square root, yep. Yes, if it's square root, and if it's the cube square, it's minus one, because minus one cube square, whatever, it's going to be minus one, right? Yeah, yeah, so when we have, yeah, yeah. so we'll go the other way and we square root it or cube root it, we can pull out the, cube, the negatives from the cubes, right? From the cube root. Yeah. When we have square roots, we end up having to pull out imaginary numbers and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. That's right. Because sometimes when you talk, you confuse me. Okay, thank you. All right. Any questions about this? This like the name of the game on this one. I don't think the eight's the, the, the thing that you're battling on there, right? It's like eight's two times two times two. I can pull it out as a two. It's really that negative on there that they're really trying to get get at on here. With that said, if we have a cube root of what, minus 125? Where am I at? Kayla is the next person on my list. So I did the tree for 125 and I did five and 25, and then I broke up 25 and five and five. And then I got the group of three fives. So I pulled out the five and had a negative one on the inside. And then, and then I did the negative one times negative one times negative one to get the negative five. You pulled out that and you said, well, I can do the negative one cube root. It's just giving me a minus one. It gives me the minus five. That's it. Mm -hmm. 125 is five quarters. That's another way to do it, right? I feel like that 125 was just something you should know the square root of. And because it was negative, it would just remain negative, correct? Like I immediately saw that, that was five, and then because it was negative, yeah, just add that sign to it. Yeah, yeah. As long as it's a cube root, yeah, you can pull up the negative, and then it's a cube root of one twenty-five is five. That's it. Any questions on these? On these three we just went through. I think most people got through these three. If not, they got right up to them probably. All right, so I want to do, in the following exercises, we're going to simplify using absolute value signs as needed. Did we do that in the notes? I thought they assumed everything was positive in the notes. Yes. Uh, I mean, these numbers, some of them in this are, are directly copies of the notes. Like 67A would just... The question would be the answer, would it not? I mean, that's that's all there is to that. Square root of y11 is just uh, square root of y11. Mm, you should be able to simplify things out of there. Yeah. So this is sort of like we we're doing like yesterday. Square root of, so that is understood to be a two and we're doing y to the 11. 
So we're looking for groups of two. How many groups of two are you going to get out of that thing? Five. And you should be able to pull some out. So yeah, I think you'd be able to pull out five with one remaining in the group. Yep. Same sort of rules are going to happen with B and C, except we get different numbers for our radical for a group. And 71, I think same thing, but now they're throwing a number in front of there. So now we have a number that we have to figure out, and then we also have to figure out a variable. So I think what they're setting you up for is 11, 15, 17, they kind of set you up with how do we do a cube root of a number? 67 is like, how do we do cube roots of variables? 71 is like, let's put those two things together and do cube roots and other roots of numbers and variables. And so I want to give you a few minutes to get through 67. And if you have time, start on 71. Uh, but I'll give you a few minutes. I think probably not the full 10 minutes, probably more like seven. Let's go seven minutes on those three problems. I think that's pretty fair. Hopefully I'll watch the clock close enough. Looks like you're back. So how far did we get? Did we get through all three of these, hopefully? Were there any problems? Are these starting to make a little bit more sense, hopefully? Okay. So I feel like we practically did this one already. This one's kind of a review anyway from like yesterday, I think. If we have y to the 11th, you're asking yourself, how many groups of two can I make out of that? That's the same thing as basically dividing that thing by two, right? How many groups of two can I get out of 11? Is 11 divided by two? So I think that's going to give me y to the five on the outside when I divide it by two. And I should have y to the one Probably not going to write the one, but that should be remaining in the square root. Or it's five and a half, right? There's another way to think about it. Five and a half, five remainder one. That one under the square root gives me that half. Questions about this? Uh, we don't. We don't have the square root of y power eleven. We have the fourth. The square four of y power of eleven. It's. It doesn't have a number there. So what I see. Sixty-seven part A. Yes, sixty-seven A. So it just has the radical, and it says y to the eleventh. Okay, what's the final results here? It's um... and so if we don't see a number there, it's gonna be a square root. So it's gonna it's kind of understood that it's two there. In this case, it's the y square. Yeah, y square power of y cube. Uh, if you do like a fourth root, is that what you're saying? Yes, what I did, yeah. Uh, so it should be a square root, but if we do a fourth root, I can do a fourth root. So if you want to change the problem around a little bit and do a fourth root instead. Yes, I did for the fourth root. It should be square, but. Okay, yeah, sorry, because it maybe it's my fault. Okay, thank we you. Can, we can do it before. It's the same thing with fourth two, just we put the, the square of fourth out and yeah. It makes sense, thank you. Two with the remainder of three, right? So we have a y squared. Y squared. We have a remainder <laughs> of three on the inside still. Yeah. Did I do that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can In also do one. two times four plus three will get you back to 11. That's another way you can sort of check these. Thank you. 
Okay. And so we did that with square root. We did it with fourth root. Had a remainder of what, three here? So something to think about like with these radicals to make sure they're fully simplified. Like the number on the inside here, right? Mm -hmm. Should definitely be, let me get a different color. It should be smaller than this index number, right? If you're getting a number that's larger than your index, that means you can take more out still. In the, the furthermore, right? Like the largest number that I can have left in here, right? The largest number that I can have left, like right here. If I get four, I can take another out, right? So the largest number I can have in there is three if I'm doing a fourth root. If I have a square root, I think the largest number I can have in there is one remaining inside the square root, right? So when we're doing square roots, I think we get at most like one of the variable remaining inside. We do cube roots, we can get at most two variables remaining on the inside. It's always got to be smaller than the index. And the largest it can be is what? One smaller, basically, right? All right, cube root. R5. Who's next? Vanessa, did you get this one? I didn't figure that one out. So how many groups of three can we take out? Three, four. This one's small enough to where we can kind of write it out. Be one group. Yeah, so we get one group of three. So I circle three of them. I pull them out as a single R. And how many R's are remaining on the inside then? It'd be two of them. Two of them, that's it. So we get an R squared on the inside. That works for this one because it's like five and three, right? But if I have like R to the hundred cube root of that thing, this is not going to work too well. So if I'm taking five and I'm trying to find groups of three, that's kind of sort of like I'm taking five and dividing it by three, right? And so if I divide five by three, I think I'm going to get what one of them. And I'm going to have two remaining. So hopefully, you can see the thing that I figured out. I'm going to have one on the outside and then have two remaining on the inside. Questions about this one? So the next one is the fourth group of uh, S to the 10. Who is next? Diana? Diana here, did she get it? Where's my band list of people? Here we go. Okay. Uh, Fidel, did you get this one? Uh, I was having a little trouble understanding it, but I kind of understand it now. Okay. So, see, if, see if you can walk through it. Or at least a little better. Um, so it would be two groups of fives. Or is that an S? On S's, yeah. So two groups of S's. So um, the S comes out, and then there'll be um, two S's remaining. So okay. Be so I think that's what you're telling me, right? I'm taking out two S's, and then I have two S's remaining. Right. Uh, how would I want to check it? So if I want to do the work, I'm doing taking 10, dividing it by four. I think you're doing this in your head. You're saying I could take out two groups. 
that's going to take out eight of those S's, right? Mm -hmm. Two groups of four would be eight, and then there would be two remaining, right? Right. So two at the remainder of two. So I have this two is that two, that two is that two, right? If I do multiply, right, and plus, two times four is eight, plus two gives me back to 10. So you can also do that sort of thing to check. Questions about this? Y'all are awfully quiet. And that's either a really good thing or a really bad thing, usually when you're a professor. It's like... <laughs> I understand it. Yeah, they either understand it so much that you don't have to ask any questions, or you just like don't understand anything, and you're like so lost you don't even know what question to ask. Usually, it's one or the other. And I'm hoping yeah, it's I'm... the first. Really hope for you and for everyone. Or they're asleep. asleep. This, this is also that's also true. I feel like personally, me, I feel like we understand the first half, but we yeah. Understand. 259 on down. I feel like that's where I like. Yeah, <laughs> I finished the whole page except for 259 and out. Right. I, just, I don't know the dividing part. All right, we'll get there. We'll get there. I was going to give you a few more minutes to finish up 71, like seven minutes or so. Uh, if there's no questions on, don't do that. Uh, if there's no questions on 67, I guess we're moving on to 71. Are we all good to move on to 71 and breakout groups? I'm going to open up the rooms then. Yep. All right, Leslie, did you get this one? Yes, I did. Okay, so what'd you do for it? So I did, I did, um, so I multiplied it by Radicals. Is it radical or is it squared six? I don't know. Square root or radical, whatever you want. Of six and then over square root of six. Mm -hmm. And then I got 10 square root of six over square root of, I don't, that's where I was. Would it be like square root of, I don't know, I was confused on that. I don't know what to put after that. Six and six gives me what? Would it be 36? Yeah, that's it. We do root 36. And we did that root 36 because root 36 is really no, another way to say what number? Um, six. Six. It brings that six out of that square root, right? And then it would be five square root of six over three? Yep, that's it. Exactly, yep. Dividing both by two. Questions about this one? Well, that's exactly what I got. I'm just not sure how, but, but same answer. Yep. Uh, if you like skip the step where you did root 36 and you just went square root of six and square root of six gives me a six outside the root, that, that's fine too. Could probably even multiply it by other things but you'd end up reducing it right if i did like i don't even know i just feel like in so much of this there are steps in the process that are almost unnecessary but at the same time if you don't do those in certain cases it gets thrown off by just one little bit and the whole rest of it falls apart after that <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we could do it by like other numbers, right? If I, if I added more numbers here, we would just end up having like a larger number here, like 30 over something, I don't know. But we'd end up getting the same numbers when we reduce our fraction. Or we could even throw in other numbers into here. Let me think, six times two. If I did like a root 12 instead and I just didn't know what the heck I was doing, I think it would probably still come out. It's just, I'm gonna have to do more work. 
that's probably not what y'all want to do, right? Probably not trying to make it look uglier. Okay, root four over 27. And I kind of told you this. I'll lead you off. We can think about them separately. And I think that's probably the way we want to think about this. So who is next? Michael Lima, did you get this one? See you around. Where you at? Brian, did you get this one? Uh, no, I didn't quite get to this one yet. Okay. These ones are kind of, I'm, I'm able to understand it, but I'm kind of slow at doing everything. Oh, work with me then. Do this. What is root? We're simplifying this. So we have something like square root of four over 27. We're going to go about that at like the square root of four over the square root of 27. Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I wouldn't try to rationalize the denominator just yet. I would try to make this a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. So I think, what would you? The root four would say, sorry? Root four is what? Be two? Yeah. So right away, we can clean that up with two. Mm -hmm. Root 27, that one might be a little different. But I think it gives me three threes. So how would I clean that up? Uh, goodness. Give you the three threes. Uh, maybe divide that by three. Or am I thinking? No. We're doing square roots. Yeah, I know. My brain is out of it today. You see three threes, but I know that the number there is two, right? So it should be groups mm -hmm. of... Groups of two? Groups of two. So if we're doing groups of two, how can I clean this up? Um, two threes come out how many times? The two threes would come out. What, four and a half times? Into 27? Mm -hmm. Or so we're looking for a group of two, right? And so if I have a group of two, this group of two should come out one time. Twice. If I'm doing, or one time, sorry. Should come out one time if I'm doing square roots. I'm looking for two things, they come out once. And if I pull those two things out and they come out once, how many things are left on the inside? Uh, 21. Look at my notes. So we're doing like three times three times three, right? These are coming out, and what's left on the inside? One. Yeah, I got one three left. One three, yes. So my suggestion is to clean this thing up. I think if you just multiply by root 27 top and bottom, You'll probably also get there. It'll take you a few more steps though, maybe. So if I start with two, three square root of three, what I really want to focus on is this thing right in here, the square root. And so I want to multiply this by something that is also a square root that gets that three out from underneath there. So if I have three, I need how many more threes? Oh, uh, one more. I need one more three, right? So I need this to get rid of that square root. And if I do it on bottom, I also have to do it on the top. On the top. Yeah. Two times root three. What is that? Maybe that's a trick question. Oh, two. Two. Square root of three. Two square root of three. If you tell me something like square root of six, I'm going to cry inside a little bit. Don't do that. Don't like start multiplying things on the inside versus things on the outside. 
things on the inside get multiplied to things on the inside, things on the outside get multiplied to things on the outside. You got to kind of make that distinction. In this case, it's going to be two uh, root of three over nine. Three square root of nine. So I'm getting two squares, uh, three on the bottom. So I get two square roots of three over Over three. So I'm looking here. I have square roots of three on top. Nine. The bottom. These two are the root of no. nine, right? Three and three is going to give me root nine. Mm -hmm. I have something that looks like two root three over three times three. three. This is three. Yep. Okay. Root nine is three. And two root three. I'm running out of room here and it doesn't like my curves. Two root three over nine. nine. Over nine. Are you there? Questions about this one? In this case, it's going to be two root three over nine, right? Yep, that's it. Okay, okay. And then maybe one thing you might want to look at that you probably already did, right? This like two, whoops, wrong one. This two and this nine right here, we want to make sure like that's fully reduced, but there's no common factors there, right? Nine's nothing but threes, two is nothing but twos. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's good. Questions about this one? Mm -hmm. All right, now we get to good stuff, huh? Clear all this. 10 over root of 5x. And we ain't got much more time. Who wants to help me through this one? Um, I think I can. Okay, what am I multiplying by? Um, the root of 5x. Yep. And, and if I do it, if I do it to the bottom, we got to do it to the top. The top is going to give me 10 square root of 5x. And the bottom is going to give you what well, I did the middle step when I had pit 5x times 5x because I just like to see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then I will, you will get 10, the square root of 5x. Um, then at the bottom, I have the square root of 25x squared. What? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm scared about that. I was like, ooh, I'm shaking in my boots. If I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't write that step personally if I was doing this problem. But if y'all want to write that step, that's fine. What's What I would write is like, I have two of the same thing that are a square root. I know it's just that thing, right? Okay. Yeah. So that's what I probably need to do. Yeah. Okay. And then I have what, 10? root of 5x. Yep. And this, see, okay, see, that's why I stopped it because I was, uh, I didn't I didn't know if I could do the 10 divided by uh, 5x. You so, can. So can I? We can do part of that, what you said, I think, right? Um, this, you, you, you've rationalized the denominator, right? So you, you're, if you did this on your test or something, you'd probably get most credit for it, right? If, if anything, that might be minus one or a half point or something. But right here is what we want to do. We have rationalized it. We still need to reduce it, simplify it. Mm -hmm. 10 over 5. You're at time, by the way. All right. 2. Is 2. This is what? 5x? 2. It's going just to be 2 squared 5x over 5. Oh, no, sorry, over x. X is what's remaining on bottom. Or 1x, yes. if you want to put the 1 there. Sorry? So, yeah, 2 square root of 5x over, over x. Over x, yes. And I'm going to ask it right quick, probably. Can I do anything with those two? Why or why not? No, knowing, we can't. knowing when to stop is sometimes also really important too, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can't do anything. Why? Because the exit bottom doesn't have a radical. 
Exactly. One is inside a radical and one is outside. So don't try to simplify those things. Don't do that. Don't try to simplify something inside the radical or something outside. Typically get it outside the radical and then simplify it, I think is the approach. But things on the outside of the radical, things simplified on the outside of the radical, things on the inside, you can do with things on the inside. But we want to look at them separately. Any questions? We are at the end. 261 looks pretty similar. It's practically the same problem with different numbers in there, right? Yeah. And um, 145, we could come back and do the last three. Uh, so I don't have office hours today. You'd have oh. to ask Ms. Wise. She's usually the one that has them after class. Okay, gotcha.